Hello everyone and welcome to this special video in which I will share my experience at the world-renowned institution, the Mayo Clinic, where I did one year of research in plastic surgery and I published over 30 papers. Before we get going, make sure to check out my research course in which I summarize my experience on how to take a research project from idea to publication. Let's start with the first day at the Mayo Clinic. Usually on the first day, you get your orientation, so they explain to you the access system, the different areas in the hospital. They give you an idea about your tasks, your responsibilities. So after I finished my orientation, I was introduced to the coordinator of the department. They gave me access to my email. They gave me access to the medical records because I'll be working on data. And you would receive a long list of training modules that you have to finish in order to be able to do research. Also, if you require visa sponsorship, you would visit the visa office on your first day. And generally, the Mayo Clinic sponsors J1 for non-US citizens. For some countries, there is no two-year home requirement for J1, while other countries, you would have the two-year home requirement when you opt for the J1 research. So after I got my orientation, the visa process, the modules, learning modules, and my access, I still remember that day when I went to the office on my first day where all the research fellows meet and it was next to the program coordinator office. It was so much fun. I, I won't forget these memorable days. I didn't meet all the faculty and residents on the first day. I got to know them as time passed by, mainly through the ground rounds and conferences that we'll talk about later. Also, on my first day, I met my mentor and I asked them about my responsibilities and I started working on my projects. So my responsibilities as a research trainee or research scholar at the Mayo Clinic were mainly to submit an IRB for a research project, collect data for research projects, do analysis, write papers, and submit the papers to, to journals. Some might ask if I had any research experience prior to starting at the Mayo Clinic, and the answer is I had only one case report that I wrote during a clinical rotation. So I did not have extensive research experience. Most of the experience I learned from the other research fellows, from courses I took advantage of. So you have always to look for these type of courses. When I was there in my first or second month, I heard from another research fellow that there is a course about how to conduct research, how to think about research ideas, how to do statistical analysis. So I registered for the course, it was for free. And you would find these type of courses in most of the institutions around the US. Try to take advantage of these courses. Definitely it would take time. So you have to dedicate extra time to go to class and learn and, and spend that time. But I, in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. And it increased my research experience extensively. Also, I learned a lot of statistical knowledge from the statistics course, but also a service that is provided at the Mayo Clinic, which is called statistical consultation. So if you have a research project, you would go to the third building in Promer. I still remember that place where you schedule a consultation and you would talk to a statistician for one hour. So they would tell you about how to conduct the analysis for your research project. So they won't do it for you, but they show you how it's done. So I took that opportunity to learn how statistical analysis is done and with every single project I add an extra layer to my knowledge about statistics and now I can do most of the statistics myself and now even if there is a new idea that I haven't heard of before if I read online it's much easier for me to understand that's why I wanted to make this process easier for you and I made a detailed course on how to conduct research and how to do statistical analysis so before I go to my next point make sure that you're taking advantage of all the educational activities, all the courses that are available for free at the institution and try to learn and spend time on that because that will help your research experience, your CV and your productivity. And now some might ask where I was working during my research time. Did I have my own office or I was working in office shared with other research fellows? And the answer is there was one office that had four desks and I had one of these desks. So I was working there and in the library. Especially when I wanted to concentrate and write papers, I needed a quieter place, so I preferred the library. Otherwise, I worked in that office with other research fellows. And now what type of projects I was working on? The main type of projects I was working on is retrospective studies, so chart review studies that involves reconstructive microsurgery. So breast reconstruction, head and neck reconstruction, thoracic reconstruction, spine reconstruction. These are the majority of my projects. But I also did some educational papers, for example, the outcomes of preliminary residents at the Mayo Clinic, the experiences of these residents, the value of research for international medical graduates, in addition to other systematic reviews and biometric analysis papers. Although I was mainly working in the plastic surgery department, I also volunteered to help 
general surgery residents with their project. And this is something for you to learn from that you can reach out to other residents and try to ask them if they have anything that you can involve yourself in. Also, I regularly attended the lectures and grand rounds at the Mayo Clinic in the Division of Plastic Surgery because this is the opportunity for me to meet the other residents, to learn about plastic surgery, meet other faculty. So it was definitely a great experience. And if you're doing research, try to stay in touch with the clinical aspect of medicine or surgery by attending these grand rounds, M&Ms and conferences, which are extremely educational and extremely helpful. And now I wanna shift gears a little bit and talk about the community and friends outside work. So the fellow association at the Mayo Clinic used to meet once a month in a very good pizza place where the research trainees, the research fellows meet, socialize, eat pizza, and they get introduced to a research project from one of the fellows. So this was a great opportunity for someone like me, new in the city, to make friends, meet other people, and blend within the community. Also, all my roommates were research fellows at the Mayo Clinic, so we used to hang out together, uh, play sports, go to restaurants. I also used to hang out with my significant other. So there are multiple opportunities for you to meet people, make friends, and you should take advantage of that. And now talking about sport. I'm someone who loves sport and I used to run out almost every day except when it's extremely cold. I also used to play tennis, basketball in the court next to our house. I used to play ping pong with our landlord. And if you like sport, there are so many opportunities. There are beautiful parks and places to run in Rochester. There is a big gym associated with the Mayo Clinic that you can also try. And now I wanna talk about Rochester. There are advantages and disadvantages of living in Rochester. And let's start first with the disadvantages. The first one is that Rochester is extremely cold and it snows very heavily. So if you're someone who cannot tolerate cold weather or and cannot tolerate snow, Rochester probably is not the best fit for you. Also, Rochester is a small city, so there is not much variety of restaurants, bars, clubs. So if you're someone who likes to live in big cities like New York City, probably Rochester is not the best fit for you too. And if you're someone who likes to travel, Rochester has a small airport, so you probably need to go to Minneapolis airport and take the flight from there. Usually people take a shuttle from Rochester to Minneapolis and the ride is around hour and a half. Although there are disadvantages of living in Rochester, such as the cold weather and the small city, there are definitely advantages. And the first advantage is that it's cheap. Rochester is cheap compared to other big cities like New York or Chicago or California. For example, if you want to rent a room in Rochester, the price would range between $500 to $1,200 depending on if you want to live with a roommate or if you want to have your own place. Definitely, there are more expensive places if you want something fancier. So the price can go up to two or $3,000, but you can get something decent between $500 to $1,200. Also, since Rochester is a small city, so you don't have to deal with traffic. I know in places like LA or New York, the traffic is very, very bad. In Rochester, it's not bad at all. You can also walk to work if you're living close to the hospital. So this is definitely advantage of living in Rochester. And finally, if you think that Rochester is a small city and you wanna have fun in a bigger city, Minneapolis is only hour and a half away and you can take the shuttle, have fun over the weekend and then come back to Rochester. And the final thing I wanna talk about today is funding. So during my research time at the Mayo Clinic, I was not funded by my mentor, so I was supporting myself, but I know other researchers that were supported by their mentors because their mentors had funds. So the ability to receive a salary from the Mayo Clinic will depend on whether your mentor has funds or not. This was in summary my experience at the Mayo Clinic. I loved my time there. It was great people, great opportunity to learn, and an amazing institution. If you have any experiences about your time in the Mayo Clinic, drop them in the comments below. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments as well, or reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malki Asad or my Facebook page, Malki Asad MD. If you're interested in learning about research, how to conduct research studies, how to take the idea from its initial stages to publication, how to do the literature review, how to write the manuscript, make sure to check out my research course and also my statistical analysis course. If you found any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos. Peace.